Interesting facts about famous people. Greatest Western Directors, John Ford. You can speak well if your tongue can deliver the message of your heart. After making videos on many of the actors that work in front of the camera, I thought I'd have a go at those behind the cameras for a change. The sheer number of westerns produced, especially during the classic era, meant that most directors made a few. I have a list that represent the most influential and recognized. I decided to stick as far as possible with those whose names tend to be closely associated with westerns, or those who made a significant contribution in this genre, either stylistically, thematically, or through their work with particular stars. The first director I have chosen to make a video on is John Ford. Let's take a look at John Ford and his body of work in the western genre. What is done is done. Spend not the time in tears, but seek for justice. A man who we identify as a great director and maker of westerns, we can't overstate the importance and influence of this extraordinarily talented Irishman. Much of the imagery normally associated with the genre stems from Ford's films. Ford dominated the development of western filmmaking like no one else before or since. John Martin Feeney, 1894-1973, professionally known as John Ford, was a film director and naval officer, widely regarded as one of the most important and influential filmmakers of his generation. Ford's frequent use of location shooting and wide shots, placing his characters against the vast, harsh and rugged natural terrain. The recipient of six Academy Awards including a record four wins for Best Director for 1935's The Informer, 1940's The Grapes of Wrath, there's 1941's How Green Was My Valley, Not only does God play dice with the universe, he's using loaded dice. And 1952's The Quiet Man. Renowned both for westerns, such as 1939's Stagecoach. Seems to me I 1946's My Darling Clementine. Nineteen fifties Rio Grande. Nineteen fifty sixes The Searchers. I like making pictures, but I don't like talking about them. And nineteen sixty twos. The man who shot Liberty Valance. This is the West, sir. When the legend becomes fact, print the legend. Ford was born in Maine. He entered the filmmaking industry after graduating from high school with the help of his older brother, Francis Ford, who established himself as a leading man for Universal Studios. After working as an actor, assistant director, stuntman, and prop man, often for his brother, Universal gave Ford the opportunity to direct in 1917, initially in short films. Quickly he moved into features, mostly with Harry Carey as his star. In 1920, Ford left Universal and began working for the Ford Film Corporation. Over the next decade, he directed more than 30 films, including the westerns, 1924's The Iron Horse. and the Irish romantic drama Hangman's House, both in 2028, and both starring Victor McLaughlin. 
In the same year, Ford directed his first talking film, the short, Napoleon's Barber. The next year, he directed his first talking feature, The Black Watch. John Ford was so funny that I couldn't wait to go to work in the morning. Richard Whitmark. Ford began working for other studios in 1931, starting with Aerosmith for Samuel Goldwyn. In 1934, he began a lengthy collaboration with producer Marion C. Cooper at RKO Radio Pictures. The next year, he directed The Informer, winning him his first Academy Award for Best Director and the Best Actor Award for its star, Victor McLaughlin. Ford directed Stagecoach in 1939, making John Wayne a major star, and won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor for Thomas Mitchell. The first time Ford filmed in Monument Valley. That same year, Ford made Young Mr. Lincoln and Drums Along the Mohawk, both with Henry Fonda. The latter was the first film shot in Technicolor for Ford. Ford made The Long Voyage Home with Wayne and Mitchell and The Grapes of Wrath in 1940 with Fonda. For the latter film, Ford received his second Academy Award for Best Director and Best Supporting Actress for Jane Darwell. He followed these films in 1941 with How Green Was My Valley, which won the Academy Award for Best Picture, winning Ford his third Academy Award for Best Director and Best Supporting Actor Award to Donald Crisp. In World War II, Ford was appointed to the Office of Strategic Services as a field photographer in the United States Navy. During the war, he made several documentaries. Two of these, The Battle of Midway and December 7th, won Academy Awards for respectively Best Documentary and Documentary Short Subject. After being released from duty, he returned to Hollywood to make 1945's They Were Expendable a war drama about PT boats in the South Pacific with John Wayne. He followed with 1946's My Darling Clementine, featuring Henry Fonda like as Wyatt Earp. Clementine. When in doubt, make a western. For the remainder of his career, Ford freelanced occasionally directing for television, also making several films, including The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance and the Civil War sequence of the Cinerama epic How the West Was Won, both in 1962. His final film as a director was 1970's Chester, a documentary short about Marine Corps Lieutenant General Lewis Chester Puller. A career spanning more than half a century, he directed more than 140 films, most of his silent films are now lost. Ford's work was highly regarded by his colleagues. Akira Kurosawa, Orson Welles, and Ingmar Bergman named him one of the greatest directors of all time. Regarded as one of the most important and influential filmmakers of all time, with four Academy Awards, he is the most honored director in film history. On February 8, 1960, Ford was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. On March 31, 1973, Ford was honoured with the Medal of Freedom Award and became the first person honoured with the AFI Life Achievement Award. As of 2022, 11 films directed or co-directed by Ford have been added to the National Film Registry, tying with Howard Hawks for the most. In 2012, The Searchers was ranked at number 7 in Sight and Sound's listing of 50 great films of all time. Thank you for your time today. I hope you learned something about John Ford. I hope you liked the video. Please drop me your comments. I appreciate likes, shares and subscribers. They help me a lot. Bye for now. I suspect that a lot of your scripts are very improvised and I believe that one of the arch exponents of this was Will Rogers. Can you tell me about him? Will you make a statement and ask a, ask a question? A lot of my scripts are improvised. Exactly what do you mean by that? That you start with basic material and then work around it. Well, I think any good director would do that. I'm in a 